welcome hi thanks for visiting the tech ark it youtube channel please consider supporting me by subscribing to this channel i love sharing knowledge however it takes a lot of my time and effort please join the channel so that you will get early access to the content and special courses only available for the joined members which are not available to the public if you are enjoying my content please spread the learning by telling your friends family and co-workers about the tech ark it youtube channel if you are looking for the training you can contact me on my email address a ravikumar48 at gmail.com are you looking for help in linux storage and monitoring related projects join our whatsapp and telegram groups links are in description below so let's see here how can we create the cluster uh, in between the both the nodes so i have uh, pv1 and pv2 here so both has uh, local zfs volumes so while installing itself i just created them so okay so both have the uh, network connectivity so which is uh, 180 to 168 29 250 and 251 here uh, so which does not have any uh, other network here so let's create the new network here and um, add the one more network uh, for the communication purpose and i'm just going to here which is a virtual machine so that's why uh, i could able to add the new um, network here without interrupting anything okay so this one uh, i'm just going to say maybe a host a private host connectivity so we're just not having any um, additional uh, the failed suspend insufficient disk space okay so what you can do is that maybe i can just power it off and I'm just going to power it off the second virtual machine as well. Or we can shut it down from here. So that would be safe. So now I shut down both of them. And uh, edit this. And add the another network card. Finish. You can see that. So I just say which might be a NAT or might be a host only. So uh, I do not require any uh, other internet connectivity for this. So it's going to be a host communication. So it would be host only would be fine. And let's see another network adapter here. And this is also I say that host only. And for this, so uh, we have a deep network connectivity. We have to check it. Um, so here you can see that so host only network is 180 to 168 234 okay so we have to provide the ip in the strange uh, otherwise it does not work uh, because i do not have any management network or any vlan configuration or the routing configuration here uh, so in order to change any network settings over here so it is a flat to virtual machines within the uh, vmware workstation So now you can see PV1 is up. Let's go ahead and refresh the console here. So it is 250. And you can see that. And go back to the network. And you can see there is a one more card which is ANS37. So which is not in active or used. Okay. So now I'm just going to create the one more bridge which in VM bridge one and the 192.168.234 dot 250 so i use the similar ip addresses and slash 24 
and there's no gateway is required so we already have the gateway which is going to be utilized and the bridge port here so we have to provide the bridge port is dependent on the network card so which is ens37 and let's say create so now you can see that so it is not becoming a yes but bridge is created on ens37 and you have to apply the configuration changes so that it will take effect and in similar way we are going to create here let's uh, reload this page and you can see ns37 also here and create one more bridge here 192.168.234.251 slash uh, cidr block is 24 and ens37 here the bridge prod which is going to be utilized and apply the configuration you can see that now so which is having the both the network connectivity and let's test it so we could able to reach uh, each one of them from this private network as well 192.168.234.251 i could able to reach and let's bring 250 as well it's able to so both are reachable from here and let's check it up from here so ping 192.168.234.250 which is reachable line 251 which is also reachable so before that so what we are going to do is that we are just going to add the host configuration here so it should be a reachable uh, using the network ip address which is 250 here pv1 and one so maybe i can add pv3 here as well but i'm not going to join pv3 here so it might be but i have the configuration file so i have to save this file and here go back to the host and add the same configuration here and save this configuration so both of them are having the both the networks and reachable here and let's join them so let's join them as a cluster so we have to go to the uh, data center and go to the cluster and create the cluster here and uh, you have to provide the cluster name so maybe i say that uh, cluster take ERK IT, and this is the ip address we are going to use it for the link and say create so basically the cluster works on the uh, core sync so that's why the core sync services will be started here if you go to the host level and there is a services system and you can see that the core sync engine is started so this was actually a down state but now it is running state if you go here and you can see on the system this core sync has died it is not started on the pv2 okay so now the, our cluster is uh, created you can see that so now we have to grab this join information here okay and this is the join information and copy this and go to the pv2 and data center and click on the cluster here you have create and join cluster so here we already have the cluster created so we are going to join this node to that so paste that private key information and uh, uh, type the password of the pve1 and say join cluster so now you can see that stopping the cluster here and it is going to join maybe restart the services and join this information sometimes it does not show you anything over here just it just stuck and say connection error something like that so that time so you just go over here and you can uh, refresh and see that you can see the host is already joined but here it is showing something like it is still doing something on the background okay connection error something like that but if you go over here and refresh or the reload this uh, information so it would be both the host will be visible over here you can see that 
PVE1 and PVE2 is available and if you go to the PVE2 and system you can see that so the cluster engine is running fine here so that's the we can join the cluster here now so cluster is joined and you can able to join the cluster and both of them are working fine so let's deploy any of the virtual machine or the container and uh, migrate them to the uh, one host to the another host so here before deploying the uh, container so what i have to do is that i have to just uh, download any template so maybe from templates and let's see anything we can download it here let's download maybe a centos 7 here okay from the lfc and it should have the internet connectivity otherwise it fails okay now you can see the container is getting downloaded from the internet based on the speed it would be faster or slower okay so now container is downloaded in the container is ready here which is 68 mb in size now let's go ahead and create the new template on this pve1 so i say maybe 105 and say sent os 7 cnt okay so you can see that um the uh, host name i'm just going to say sent os 7 the container cnt i say say and I do not have any resource pool. I just uh, provide the password of that container here. So which is by default the root password. And click next. And here you can see that uh, storage. You can select type what is this. And uh, select the here. Okay. So which is actually a template path. Where is the template is located. And go to the disks and see. Uh, where you want to host this so I'm just going to host on the ZFS file system and set disk size what is the disk size you would like to give it here so it just take an 8 GB in space so that would be fine so let's next and uh, CPU is going to be a one core and uh, limitation and here uh, 512 MB in size it's memory size it's going to take and the Ethernet it's going to create it at zero and maybe I just change it to the this different bridge network here and say automatically get this DHCP IP address okay for the IPv4 so I do not have any IPv6 over here and let's say DNS what is the DNS settings here 192.168.234.2 so I'm sorry it is a domain name so take ARKIT dot local and the DNS IP address is 192.168.29.1 and this and finish so now it's going to extract the container and launch the container here you can see that detected the container and uh, SSH key is created, done the creation completed, and the task is okay. So the container is in place. You can see that the container is in place here. Now let's start the container. Start. Let's migrate the container and see how it does the cluster works here. So I right click on the container here and say migrate so select the target node so if you have multiple nodes you can select the target nodes here click on the migrate so it will take a little time based on your hardware configuration or the background uh, what are the network connectivity you have connected between the both the nodes so if it is uh, a physical hardware then it will take uh, much quicker but if it is a virtual machine in your environment or it's not a powerful machine then it will take little time so you can see that the task has been completed here so the migration started and the logical volume has been created on the destination and uh, the data blocks are replicated then it's completed the um, after replication it is also clear the dump data so which is already a um, staging data is removed you can see virtual machine has been migrated 
For more updates, click on subscribe and click on bell button for latest notifications.